By nature, Kai is a busy bee, from running his catering company, Game and Flames, to working in the nuclear industry, to being a dad, the fishing, spearfishing, and of course, hunting. It was actually a catering job that landed him this permission in the east of England. It means a change from the usual fallow and rabbits back home in Sussex to muntjac and hares here. It's going to be quite tricky, but I think the best option is definitely going to be in the woodland. The thermal does give you some advantage, but if they're really deep in there, you just, it's just going to block it, you're not going to see it. The local deer gravitate to this woodland block, which Kai will dissect using the pulsar thermal. Our first spot is actually striped. We've seen something with a the thermal. And I put the rifle onto it. David, I looked at it. Oh, I can see it was a catch in there, like a poor tail, which is quite stripy. I think it could be a cat. I've seen a cat here before, even though we're quite far from houses. Yes, on closer inspection and bad news for the baby birds, it's a healthy looking moggy. Recently we've noticed a lot of the ends of these oak trees have fallen, fallen down like they've been bitten. And uh, we don't exactly know what it is. So maybe you guys can uh, tell us what's the cause of this. David's noticed it a lot home. I've seen a few and now this permission we see them all over the place. So it'd be quite interesting to see what's the cause of um, these. Interesting. We circumnavigate the wood and end up in a clearing that Kai and his friends have established to get on top of the numbers here. It's a perfect space for the muntjac. So we've, we've had some feeders here, some pheasant feeders as well, and they've been kind of feeding in. But um, I put a high seat up at the back tree over there that overlooks the wood. So the wood itself isn't all that big, but right in the centre of the woodland. It's really thick with um, brambles and bracken and, and thick bushes. And they come out to this clearing in the evening to feed. It's been here for a while now, but we've had to padlock it and put like um, number locks on them because uh, there are people here who would uh, vandalise and, and trash. We're quite close to the, the town, so we've got to be careful that they're properly locked up and secure so no one goes up there and falls off with a deer. Just our luck. Fallow. It feels like they've dispossessed the Munties. One species they haven't seen off is the European brown hare. Not originally a native of the UK, it probably came here with the Romans. It's an animal that's been in the news of late too. At the moment, most shooters agree not to shoot them between the 1st of March and the 31st of July unless they're causing severe crop damage. So, obviously a rabbit's smaller, but it's obviously it's more of a white meat. Um, hair is darker, more, you know, more kind of purpley red colour and richer. So when you actually skin them, they both look actually completely different almost. There's a lot of blood in hair as well, so you know, it's worth bleeding them out. Like some recipes that I think work really, really well with hair is like a hair bourguignon. That's really good. I've done hair bolognese. Hair does lend itself more to like a, a low and slow style recipe really i would def definitely say low and slow like low and slow there. yeah so it's it's really good with an hour before dark kai decides to do the high seat thing although it sounds like he may get itchy feet in my mind i always think i bet they're out on the other side of this wood i bet they're out in that field over there and you're sitting up here and they're having a party somewhere else one of the benefits of the high seat is close-up observation this fallow doe is the only deer that's made an appearance. It's fascinating to see her browse and hear her chew. Eventually, a movement unnerves her. Out of season, so we couldn't shoot her anyway. But it was just so nice to see her 
come out of the wood. I had no idea we were here, just happily grazing away. And um, just to watch her, to watch their behavior, just makes it just all worthwhile, you know? Like I said, it's just not all about the shooting, it's appreciating nature. I mean, to that close, you can actually just, you know, hit, actually see what they're eating and hear them moving about, chewing and just going through the undergrowth. The fallow doe definitely helped pass the time and we didn't get what we came for. A bit of deer diversity and a crack at a munchak. Sure, a munchak here. Yeah. Positive. <laughs> <laughs>